Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. The summer's over, the summer camps are gone, and now it's time to go right into our new season here at MCAT, which is usually uh, associated with doing some high school sports. So if you have a teenager or anything like that that is interested in doing some, kind of some, pick up some film, some work, um, we're gonna be covering the, uh, uh, the men, the boys uh, football and the girls volleyball fall season for uh, various uh, schools across Missoula. County Public Schools. So, um, top of the news today, last Saturday MCAT was tasked with a live stream and it went poorly. So, for MCAT, we apologize for those wanting to view it live as it was going on. But also, please refer to our uplo uh, uploaded version from our YouTube and our Facebook pages. Watch uh, the many folks who came out to support in remembering former Mayor John Engen. Here's some, uh, oh, not former Mayor, sorry, Mayor John Engen. So, here's some fluff for you. So Girl Scouts introduced a new cookie. Uh, raspberry Rally. It looks like the Thin Mints, but with a raspberry surprise inside. Either they have a completely new cookie like that gluten-free toffee cookie, which is to me the poor man's caramel. Uh, however, this is one is special because it's closely related to Thin Mints, but not uh, only slightly different uh, is the feeling. Okay, look out for them Girl Scout cookies. They're usually in front of grocery stores and Walmarts alike. Um, always nice to kind of start the show with some great news with that. And speaking of good news, uh, Thursday, the city of Missoula unveiled a new trail at Waterworks Hill. The new trailhead will include 40 spaces for parking and have of uh, 40 miles of gravel, uh, actually, wait, no, half a mile, I, I miswrote that, half a mile of gravel on the trail, giving access to folks wheelchair about and have mobility issues a chance to enjoy the recreation and this was after eight years the city of missoula Par public works and parks and recreation collaborated on this project you know i did speak about this during the height of the pandemic and this is one of the first uh, major projects that were uh, created during the um the pandemic which we're able to initiate for the final reveal on Thursday. The entire cost of this project was $800,000 and a large share of the cost was covered by the Bridge and Road Safety and Accountability Act, BARSA. This is uh, funding that is, that is the state legislature created in 2017 to help communities improve their local roads and infrastructure. And you can find more information about this story at Missoula Current. Um, voting rights in Montana have not shied away from national narrative of tightening restrictions of voting and registration. So far, uh, the Montana legislation passed three bills. That uh, first one was uh, 169 and limited college IDs as acceptable form of identification when registering to vote. House Bill 176 eliminating the right to vote for register on election day, moving the deadline to noon the day before the election. So no same day voter registration. And also uh, House Bill one of the more controversial ones, which is the 530, prohibited ballot collection from receiving compensation for their services aside from the election officials or authorized mail services. And that one was weird because it was already kind of doing its own thing. The last significant uh, reduces the effort to uh, necessarily collect a vote or maybe create a problem that necessarily wasn't there. Attorney Lars Philip for the Secretary of State argued that while all eligible voters have the right to vote, the right to have one's ballot uh, collected or received an absentee ballot is not guaranteed by law. So the Great Falls Tribute continue to go into detail about how some First Nation citizens live farther away from election offices and may not be able to make multiple trips on the official election site, hence the registration and being able to do the same day registrations. And from the First Nation, over 800 ballots were cast by Native Americans who used same day uh, registration in 2018 and 2020 election, which for Montana is in general is a large per capita than many other communities in, in our state and other states as well. One of the things I like about Montana was that we uh, moved to the beat of our own drum to a degree. Uh, we still take advantage of federal subsidies. We're not completely cut off from the national stage, but for the most part, Montana has remained steadfast in keeping with our own state constitution, which is basically about dignity. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are included, but the dignity was strong when they drafted it in our constitution 50 years ago. I always like to remind people about that. It's a really important constitution. It's one of the few ones uh, uh, compared to other states that have, uh, have had very little uh, amendments done to it. So California is right on track to ban gas vehicles by 2035. The ban will pre uh, not prevent people from using gas powered vehicles. However, it will go after those who uh, manufacture and sell the cars. And um, 
So the whole idea was dramatically cut by the state's climate warming emissions and famous, uh, famously dirty air by speeding the transition to electric vehicles so you can still drive your discounted Hummer H1 through 3. Uh, discontinued, sorry. The regulation which was approved by California Air Resource Board, CARB, in a vote on Thursday could have massive repercussions for the country's auto manufacturing industry and broader fight against climate change. President Joe Biden has also been a proponent of creating new opportunities to have all the vehicle sales uh, to be zero carbon emissions by 2030. So part of that was to uh, have uh, also have a higher gas mileage uh, per gallon. I believe it was another one to uh, make sure that all cars have a minimum of about 50 to 60 miles per gallon minimum for gas emissions. Um, there's uh, 13 other states, including Oregon, New York, and Colorado, typical for California's auto emission standards, which are already on more stringent in the country. Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced Wednesday that his state will set a similar goal of banning new gas powered cars by 2035, according to NPR. The only issue we can look forward to is affordability, but with encouraging uh, new vehicles, the bolstering of used electric vehicles allows for some wiggle room. But remember when Obama did cash for junkers, many of the used cars became um, more of a rarity as a result, hence more expensive. And during the pandemic, even used cars were on par with buying a new car, with some as getting as high as 80% of the new ticket prices. So in a, uh, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's happening in terms of gas and travel. Um, and speaking of travel, uh, so far a petty move by the U.S. bans flights from China after they ban flights from the U.S. amidst their COVID concerns in their country. So they have a zero COVID policy which uh, has prevented a lot of people who were uh, basically to travel to China, China in general. U.S. regulators suspended seven flights by Air China LTD from New York and a total of 19 flights from Los Angeles by Air China, e uh, Chinese Eastern Airlines, uh, Chinese South uh, Southern Airlines, and Zamin um, Airlines, according to the Department of Transportation. Communist Party's zero COVID strategy aims to get the virus out of China while other governments are shifting to living with the disease um, that has kept um, the case numbers low but disrupted travel manufacturing and trade. Beijing, Beijing is easing travel curbs but most foreign visitors are still barred from China. This unfortunately isolation has also uh, done a lot of harm for a lot of different countries including uh, President Vladimir Putin who has isolated himself in many occasions during COVID and as Russia begins to grow their uh, army as Ukraine, Ukraine's fresh off of the direct attack on Crimea, the peninsula that was taken in Russia in 2014, um, Mr. Putin secured his power and having silenced dissent appears to have little uh, incentive to stop the war, which has now waged for more than six months without declaring a nationwide draft that could have provoked a mystic discontent. The conflict has settled into a war of attrition with little movement along the front lines in recent weeks, even as both Mr. Zelensky and Putin face glowing political pressures to show result on the battlefields. And speaking of results, Ukraine says it will lead a major offensive, but when is still up in the air. There doesn't seem to be much coverage being seen from Ukraine as they uh, have passed the six months, uh, 180 days into this conflict and have passed their 31st year of independence from the former Soviet Union last Wednesday. The war has moved into of that war of attrition and winter may see some of the biggest challenges for Ukraine as the weather is starting to get a little bit cooler. And speaking of weather, you know, Missoula, if you haven't already noticed, it has been a little cooler. There has been some thunderstorms. There's been rain, um, just a lot of different things happening uh, as well. It, it kind of dipped into the 80s and kind of stayed there for a while, but we can expect that weather to jump back into the 90s this weekend and throughout the next week. We, we're, we're, we're starting to see a little bit more precipitation, more clouds and more stuff like that as things are starting to cool down a little bit more. But that's just kind of what's happening there. And hey, this weekend, also the Root River City Roots Festival is happening starting today and going in well into Saturday. They have kids activities and kids events well into the weekend and it's a perfect way to uh, kind of see our community because we just got a bunch of those new college kid transports into the Missoula area checking out what Missoula is all about. So the River City Roost Festival are happening today and tomorrow and also this weekend is the last weekend for the Northside Cinema. So if you're interested in going out to see uh, Castaway with Tom Hanks, MCAT's going to be volunteering there with us and our staff. We'll be uh, providing popcorn and snacks um, and yeah so 
The movie starts around sunset, which is closer to 8, 8.30. You can please come and support the North Side neighborhood for that. Up next, we have a series of short films and movies and stuff uh, from our horror camp last week. And then when I come back, we're going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Now available to own on video and DVD. Even after 35 years, he's not done. This summer, prepare yourself for the cinematic experience you've been waiting for. He knows no rules. Strangers to Pain. Astley 2. The Reckoning in Theaters 2069. <laughs> MCAT was filmed in front of a long studio audience. <laughs> So here's my problem. My two friends are fighting. <gasps> Any ideas on how we could help them? Here's my ideas. One, buy a new remote. Two, teach them to take turns. Three, destroy the remote. This will be so much fun. And now it's time for Shadow Puppets with Shadow Sam. Hi, I'm Shadow Sam. Today we're learning about colors and shapes. First, I'm gonna turn into a green cactus. It's green, it's a cactus, it's a green cactus. Now we have a red octopus. It's a red octopus. It's an octopus, and it is the color red. And now, a vroom vroom, a blue car. It's a car that is blue, and it has great gas mileage, baby. And now it's time for Spelling with Spelling Susie. I'm so angry. It's my remote. There you are. I came here to cheer you up with a little thing called sharing. Really? Okay. Yes. And now it's time for nursery rhymes. Humpty Dumpty sat on a well. Humpty Dumpty had a great fell. All the king's horses and all the king's men said Humpty came out before and again. Welcome to Food Groups. What's a strawberry? It's a fruit. What's a dairy? It's a milk. Dairy products or milk products, also known as lactosinia, are a food products made from or containing milk. The most common dairy animals are cow, water balloon, buffalo, nanny goat, and sheep. Dairy products also include the grapes, the ice, the rice bowl, and toad, peanut butter. I'm sorry, let me say that again. I wanted to watch. No, 
but he wanted to watch Come on. Hey friend, how you doing? I came here to cheer you up. So I thought I'd come here and teach you about it. Let's go! Hey guys, we are exactly one week away from our Saturday drop-ins. Um, yeah, so every Saturday from 1 to 3, kids get a chance to come to our studio space right here in this room, do some stop animation, just have some fun with that. And we have some uh, people of staff like myself and Neil will be here to uh, guide them on their uh, stop animation journey if they so wish to do so. It's a drop-in, so it's uh, first come, first serve. We can accommodate up to uh, eight kids. We have some wiggle room for more, but uh, at the same time, uh, we effectively work very well between eight and 10 kids. So moving on, let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. And a 3,000 years of longing, but not necessarily for this movie, as we jump right into a woman who is content with her life to a T, finds and releases a genie, and does not know what to do with them, basically. Uh, except kissy kissy romance stuff, Idris Elba and Tilda Swinton join forces to annoy and then love each other because all romance movies are about annoying somebody into loving you. Enjoy a movie that will actually feel like 3,000 years of longing to get to the end. Uh, save yourself the time because this movie will probably have this lady wish for something trivial but meaningful for her and the genie to be like, that's a good wish, I love you now. Then the lady will use her uh, professorship to write and a thing and about her experiences and get tenure like she always wanted to. Good times. The invitation. Hey, have you ever been in those kind of horror situations where just like you get invited to something and you're just like, uh oh, I think I bit off more than I can chew. Welcome to another series of horror movies. Honestly, the difference between horror and comedy is just very similar. This is one of those dinners you want to pass. What starts out as a 23andMe genealogy test turns into an invite to a dinner with rich, weird people do rich weird things, and then expect the protagonist to follow their lead? Um, I'm sorry, but traditions and families are ancestral peer pressure uh, from a bunch of dead people. Watch as this girl probably turns the tables on the extended family of hers and begins to uh, get over her anxieties that were established at the beginning of the movie, fighting for your life as good therapy according to movies. Uh, this one is kind of coming out the blue. It's called The Good Boss. It's uh, starring Javier Bardem, coasting on the success of No Country for Old Men and a little bit of Skyfall comes a, a coming of middle age as a boss must learn to either come out of his shell or try to be a better person as his business is beginning to crumble around him. But the idea of the, that he is about to win an award and try to convince his staff, they're just like, wait, why are you winning an award? For his efficiency as a boss and mostly the efficiency of his workers. Um, so that's just kind of one of them. It's going to lead to some hilarious results trying to convince his uh, workers that are just like, you know what, you're winning an award, but I don't think you deserve it. And then he's going to try to be the good boss that he, everyone thinks he is to try to win the award, hilarious results, brain hurts. Anyways, that's what you can expect from this movie. Anyways, uh, up next we have a 1944 uh, film uh, featured in dub and stuff from the 1944 film Bluebird. Enjoy, and when I come back we're going to talk about the uh, city of Missoula's budget for fiscal year 2023. Exciting. I beg your pardon? Hmm, indeed, your um, layers upon layers on your coat is not... Uh... Well then, how may I ask, would you prefer me to be dressed? Well, let me make this quite clear Enlighten to you. me. A civilian you are not. So, even when I'm on leave, I must wear a uniform? In this particular military, yes, indeed. In many ways, you have given up your civilian life with your dogs and cats and all that stuff. Hmm, I see General Wisecrack has gotten to you. Perhaps maybe we could discuss this with the General, and maybe he can enlighten us. Exactly what is going on, for you are just a mouthpiece. You don't have any real... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, an instrument 
with keys and valves and all sorts of connections to... Listen, you're in the military band. Is this the hill you want to die on? It would be an honor to die for my country, but I am a coward. And yet here we are, talking about not wearing your uniform. The military band uniform is a joke, and you should know it. A joke or not, you have to follow the rules. A united front is a united front. There's no room for individuality. Well, that's just not fair. And you're drug into this to reprimand me? How is that fair for you? You're wasting your time with such a little thing, such as a band guy? You know what it's like to be in a band, a company, a group of soldiers fighting side by side with you? Of course not, because the only thing that matters is the first and last note. And what note. is the last note you wish to play? It better not be Journey, because people play Journey all the time. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Good day, gentlemen. Ha ha ha. Well, looks like just another band geek schooled ya. Oh man, these band kids are out of control. What are we going to do about them? We can take their sheet music. Ha, that's a good idea. Well, we're done with the fun stuff, and now it's time to get into the really, really interesting stuff, which is city government kicking things off. We got a, a series of public comment, a series of different things happening within the city of Missoula. City Council was a long one because the city is working through the budget of fiscal year 2023, and Daniel Carlino put in a couple of amendments uh, arguing that the Rogers International Security should not be used at many of the sites, the temporary safety outdoor spaces for homeless and also the Pavarella Center in various locations through the Operation Shelter. The, of course, the biggest news was the 11% tax height amid inflation and relief money that started many of the newer programs are starting to potentially die out if they don't get funding. So public comment kicked off with concerns for Rogers security. And so here is Kevin Hunt with the first public comment. I think that if the city wants to honor the legacy of Mayor Engen, there should be, and there should have been already a week ago, a very firm and strong denunciation of this conduct by this rogue renegade contracted police force that has broken several provisions of the contract by this con uh, conduct. You need to rescind that contract. You need to, to announce what they did and tell the public that you're taking it seriously. No more, you know, maybe pamby milk toast statements. People are angry about this and these pictures are all over the internet. Um, this is this is an outrage and now, now I, you know, we've learned in the last couple of days, um, defendants in some criminal cases are raising defenses that they've had things planted on them to cover up misconduct by this police force. Uh, people, including a, a city council person who has done ride-alongs, uh, have indicated that, that these guys, when patrolling around town, they're harassing people who are walking down the sidewalk, walking their bicycles and things like that, telling them to move on. This is unconstitutional, and it's just an outrage. For-profit policing doesn't work. Okay, so that was the first public comment. And for those of you who don't know what was happening um, in recent news, there was a uh, reaction to uh, new compliances put upon the people on these designated camping sites, especially the one by the Walmart off Clark Fork River, um, which were required to be clean, hold no permanent structures, rise no higher than 10 feet, and not exceed a 10 by 15 foot space marked by fence posts. Some folks went beyond that and they uh, forcibly removed a lot of the items from there. So there's just a lot of stuff going on here. And Joe, who has been the main critic of Rogers International, spoke upon this again in terms of uh, um, disbanding uh, the security um, that the city bought. The matter of Missoula's treatment of the poor and unhoused is a bellwether and important of things to come. Are they interested in solving the problem of poverty and homelessness in this community? Sure doesn't look like it. Looks like they're interested in criminalizing poverty and driving the evidence of their policy failures to camps or out of the community entirely. It's shameful. If they aren't serious about dealing with poverty, can we rely on them for the harder tasks that are gonna come in the next couple decades? There are authoritarians in Helena right now who are gonna come for Blue Mountain Clinic. Do you have the political courage to stand up to Greg Gianforte? What about when they come after a kid at Sentinel High School is just trying to live his life, his or her life, or theirs. Do you have the courage to stand up to MPD or MCSD 
and tell them that they have to refuse to enforce these laws? Are you going to be able to do anything about the coming floods and heat waves and freezes that kill people, kill community members? Do you have any willingness in your hearts to do something now while we still have a chance? As it stands, the majority of the city council refuses to summon the political courage to make hard decisions on morally clear problems. We can throw tens of millions of dollars at a Californian for killology lessons and freaking insane drug policies, but God forbid the social workers be able to make the rent. They have to come in and grovel to you and to the commissioners every year so that they can barely make 30K. Okay, so that was Joe uh, talking about uh, that. Uh, in many ways, you know, however you swing it, the Operation Shelter as a whole is a new program that was in place. We can care as much about the folks who are in dire need, but when it comes down to it, Roger was a presence that to keep the peace, and they dressed like they were ready for war. Uh, the Liberty, uh, the library has altered their security protocols to have wellness officers to de-escalate situations that may come up, but overall, uh, the police will always come if there is an incident that does escalate. Carrot versus the stick. That's what it always comes down to, and Gwen Jones assesses the public on this particular issue. In the meantime, we're in a situation where we also cannot not have security at these locations. And if we stop security, these locations have to get shut down. And that's also something that I don't want to see happen. So we're working with the situation. And in the meantime, we're also working on what is a longer term plan and how should we approach this constructively to have a better situation for everybody. So I want you to know that it is being discussed um, and part of this is will there be money in the long run also and that affects how we go about these staffing decisions because uh, with the crisis services levy that will potentially be on the ballot in this november if that doesn't pass then it's a whole different conversation so. yeah and in many ways the public are not necessarily allowed to be anywhere near a lot of these campsites uh, and the security kind of works in, the, in that favor of protecting the people who are actually there. But at the same time, there's some issues like that were brought up from that story about um, removing some of those uh, areas in the campsite that kind of came to fruition. Um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting situation going on here, but I think the, the best solution, just from my own opinion, and I don't want it to represent MCAT or the city of Missoula or anything like that, it's just like you got to find a little bit of medium ground and wiggle room. Best case scenario, you should find a good amount of uh, staff that are willing to be more wellness officers rather than just uh, straight up security force um, with uh, heavily guard up gear and everything like that. You know, they're wearing bulletproof vests and it's, it, it's, it definitely feels like a bit overkill. And yeah, I think some of the reactions with some of the new conditions of the campsite were a little bit overkill as well. So now we get into the actual budgeting for Missoula fiscal year, because that was like a prelude to uh, um, a lot of the amendments, a lot of issues that were brought up during the budget to be like, hey, let's uh, kind of rein back and go back a little bit more like that. So they talk about raising the taxes. City taxes and homes with an assessment value of $100,000, which, you know, honestly is like a, a dinky little shack on a, a really tiny parcel, if anything, a condo, will increase to about uh, $431, a jump of $44.99 over the previous year. This assessed value is set by the state and differs from a home's market value. Overall, the main focus of this budget was geared towards the continuation of the mobile crisis unit with an emphasis on directing millions of dollars to homelessness, housing, mental health, and including crisis intervention. So Chief, uh, Chief Administrator Officer Dale Bickle talks about the budget overview, and this is some of the things from last year and going on to this year that they want to continue doing. This is the list of all of the motions um, that City Council uh, would um, consider tonight as part of this process. So the budget itself, the annual appropriation, which includes the permissive medical levy, that is their ability to um, assess um, increases in health insurance costs outside of our traditional mill levy cap. There's the fee increases I talked about. Um, this also adopts the budget and work plans for the road district, park district, business improvement district, and the tourism and business improvement district. Um, and. Uh, so it fixes the appropriations, the budget, and for the capital improvement program, and all of those items listed there. Um, and then a resolution uh, levying the taxes for, for those purposes as well. Um, so there's a lot of motions related to adopting the budget that are listed there. 
All right. So that was Dale Bickle kind of show. I think he's giving the rundown a little bit. There's just there's a lot of information, and that slide is basically all the funding. And Dale goes into how this budget compares to other communities in the state of Montana. This is. This is our attempt to put all of the cities um, on a apples to apples comparison. And it's simply, you take all of the revenues and you divide by the number of people and you get a revenue per capita estimate. Um, and you can see, um, we are we reasonably compare with our peers. We're in the middle of, the, of these, this is FY23. Um, and you can see where uh, Missoula sits in all this. And that stands to reason because we're all using the same uh, type of tool here to, you know, we all have the, the same property tax and special district tools. So. Um, this accounts for all of that. So we are, um, so th this does show that we are, uh, you know, reasonably even maybe on the low side on a per capita basis of our peers. All right. So that kind of gives, I mean, that, that doesn't explain too much. It just, like, we are spending more than uh, Billings, which has a higher population, but at the same time, higher population, probably more distribution of wealth. Um, so as the budget uh, lie, uh, as the budget sits, public comment was swift to condemn the police presence of the mobile crisis unit, um, to which the city explained that in the past that all calls will be fielded by dispatch and police will always show up to an incident and when deemed safe, the mobile crisis staff will work with individuals on a case-by-case -case issue. So no matter how many times, no matter how many things you're like, oh, the, the mobile crisis unit is going to come here to help my friend, is like the police will always show up. That is the guarantee that when you call 911, even for a mental health emergency that may seem minor, the whole point is that there's always have to be a police presence for the, the concept of safety and protecting the mobile crisis unit if need be. Kevin Hunt comes back to public comment on the proposed budget as it was presented, and this is what he had to say. We believe in very meticulous oversight, efficient spending, and not wasting dollars on feel-good things. We want to actually get results. More than anyone, we on the left have to adhere to that. And it's about time that the liberals did the same. Thank you. Okay. That was uh, Kevin Hunt, and here is uh, a Bozemanite who has been living here in Missoula. Uh, Jackson Crawford talks about affordable housing trust and the struggles that some of the people that he knows in the city of Missoula. I am lucky enough to be a homeowner at this age, which is pretty ridiculous, honestly. Uh, my dad had helped me buy a house here, and I'm lucky to be able to use that as a way to support friends. And I have about a, at least a dozen people who have stayed with me for free for a day up to three months to try to find a place to rent here. And it's just a huge problem. And I've seen it over and over again. I have three people in my house right now. Um, and. All I can say is you have a really difficult job. I don't know how to create a budget like this, but I do know that the city staff recommended $850,000 go to this trust fund. And that Scott Street project is a great example of you know, affordable housing being built here. I brag about it to my family in Bozeman all the time. Um, and I think the more we can invest in affordable housing, the better. Um, I am really lucky to have a high paying job in a house. And I don't think nearly enough people have that privilege in our community. Um, and I just want to voice my support for the affordable housing trust fund that's all okay and you know that's just one of many other budgeted items within the uh, city of missoula that they uh, want to keep going and keep moving on and moving forward with but one of the biggest things that are basically being taken away is these arpa funds as covid cares act relief funds that were meant to help tackle homelessness and now that they're starting to dry up a little bit more not to mention at the state level there's been some um, reluctance to release even more money of the affordable uh, um, the american um, care the arpa money that they that they passed but yeah it's it's interesting just uh, thinking about the whole idea is that a, a couple uh, like about a week or so ago i reported a story about the 1.5 billion dollar surplus that montana had um, it, um, D um, dems especially from missoula had advocated for the one billion dollars that would go towards mental health and uh, uh, like the one in Missoula and stretch it over the long term, also improve and bolster some of the services for people who are homeless. Um, there's just a lot of things. Public comment went back and forth with keeping all these programs, but also very concerned about the uh, amount of spending and the tax ri rise that is going up here as well. And in contrast with all this stuff, but th the check is due and the funding was, uh, like I said, started by ARPA 
and COVID relief fund, but uh, continuation is another monster entirely. It's like, hey, you can have all this money, you can start a program all you want, but a lot of these programs aren't necessarily uh, profitable or sustainable. So as a result, they have to uh, work to on a more of an, an even thinner budget. I mean, just imagine what happened during, uh, just before COVID and the emergency winter shelter. One of the big things with that was um, they probably pitched up about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 just for opening the winter warming shelter on Johnson Street. And then they additionally added with Operation Shelter and some of the things that happened as a result of Missoula forcing the people from the Broadway Island out of there based on the word of the uh, health department in Missoula. Um, that caused some controversy. O Operation Shelter was created in path to uh, basically add the security to uh, protect not only uh, the the property, but also the people within the property. And of course, you know, last couple weeks we've also seen there's been a lot of uh, uh, heavy handedness when in terms of working with some of these folks as well and with the new restrictions. So there's just a lot of stuff going on here and there's a lot of wiggle room um, to improve a lot of the services without outright just banning things completely. So Dale Bickle talks about appealing to the legislature about your taxes uh, if you are worried about being basically taxed out of your home. Um, and there's two tracks that a lot of uh, changes in the property tax code can get done through the legislature. Um, and also these businesses have the same uh, protest opportunities that are available to all taxpayers. Um, and so they, uh, uh, you know, um, have the ability to uh, protest uh, taxes as well. Okay. So if you feel as though you're unjustly taxed and you are also on a fixed income, um, you, ha you have the option of being able to um, a work with uh, the ability to uh, contact your state legislature. You'd be like, hey, I'm on a fixed income. I need some kind of, like you can have a deductible, a tax credit, that kind of stuff. Heck, even a lot of the money from the uh, CARES Act and ARPA money was moved towards housing, which you can get um, in touch with. Unfortunately, a lot of the people who are on a fixed income who are quote unquote 55 and older retired folks, um, you know, the, the ability to actually use technology is a whole nother monster and entirely. So being able to find those resources to get certain tax breaks for certain people who are retired and on the quote unquote fixed income to be able to move forward with this. So Sandra Vasica asks Dale about the ARPA funds that have been uh, held up uh, for 2024. So uh, this is the money that was left aside and it's about 900, Eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars that is money for the continuation of Operation Shelter and that stuff. And so Dale Bickle talks a little bit more about that. We are carrying over approximately nine hundred and seven thousand dollars of our ARPA resources that we received that we were, uh, want to uh, save for FY24 in case of, you know, particularly for items related to our um, Operation Shelter programs that are facing running out of money um, and also just being able to make sure our, our have tools to help balance next year's budget like we had to with this year. Um, uh, ARPA expires. We have to have it all committed by the uh, end of calendar year, calendar year 24. So there is time in order to uh, deal with that, that piece. May I have a quick follow up? Go ahead. Um, we have to have it committed by uh, fiscal year uh, 24. Uh, when do we have to have it spent by? Uh, uh, if I recall right, uh, by the end of the calendar year 2026. Thank you. All right, so the money is uh, basically being stretched and this money that was all goodwill and to help people dealing with a lot of things um, during uh, COVID times, losing their job, uh, um, the eviction moratorium was uh, put into place, but now it has been lifted and, and now it's a pretty strong landlord market, especially in Missoula. And so a lot of people are trying to struggle with having two to three jobs while also living in a closet, basically. You might be asking, how come we don't use the money for tax relief? Uh, but you're wrong uh, because the, with the money that was passed the COVID CARES ARPA Fund Act related to housing instability and being able to afford to stay in your home, it didn't really mention tax relief. But just so you know, we did get uh, a delay to pay taxes, not to mention we got COVID relief money, uh, stimulus checks, mind you. Uh, the overall funding is based on matching expenses with the revenue to a T, maintaining that the budget is important be, uh, because many communities are dealing with the crunch in these hard times. Missoula ain't special um, in raising taxes, but we're managing to keep a lot of these goodwill efforts while also maintaining the general fund. In terms of what the city will be doing, the tax increase was inevitable and Rochester Security will still be at the helm 
of handling situations that may arrive from the poverella and those respective areas where camping is allowed. One of the things that many people always seem to miss is that asset from Missoula, assets that do get sold from Missoula, like land, property, and especially the Scott Street project, once the development gets done with affordable housing, um, the money goes towards the affordable housing trust, which they already set aside a good amount of money for this as well, which is due to get more money this year from sales of Scott Street development. There are a lot of things happening, which is probably why the budget is so stretched and stressed currently. ARPA funds were a major band-aid, and this aid will dry up either immediately or limp towards the finish line. Either way, the 907 thousand dollars left are being used for continuing the services Missoula has shown pride in with Operation Shelter, Affordable Housing Trust Fund, and the Mobile Crisis Unit. So for more information about this and more, you can go to uh, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website for people to get engaged. You can also go to engagemissoula.com. So this is a great website for you guys to uh, get involved and find out what's going on with the city, agenda items, and more. But overall, the uh, budget was passed uh, with a 10 to 2 vote. Van, uh, Sandra Vasica uh, voted in no for the budget. Daniel Kalidia voted in no in the budget with a hard line of not continuing to work with Rogers International Security. So that's kind of what's happening there, you know, moving forward. Um, we have an art clip for you guys if you're interested in going out and about. Uh, next Friday is First Friday, so I'll talk about some of the new art installations that are be coming out this weekend. So when I come back, we're going to talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula right after uh, this uh, art clip from Todd uh, Forgren, The World is Round. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening this weekend. It is, like I said, the River City Roots Festival, and that is a big uh, deal uh, that basically is kind of like our downtown Missoula days leading into, uh, you know, college and, you know, it's basically the kickoff, in the last kind of like festival until, um, yeah, until... Okay, I'm blanking on here. I'm, I'm trying to vamp. So uh, so a lot of things are happening here. A lot of uh, bands and things are going to be playing. It's basically start going to be starting in three hours from now, so noon today. So if you've seen this from the past, it's noon on Friday. Um, and yeah, and so Keller Williams, Grateful Grass, Amanda Shaw, Amy Helm, The Hill, uh, the Hill Benders, uh, Lainey Lou, and The Bird Dogs, Drew Landry, and The North, uh, the North Country Ramblers. Um, there's just a lot of different things here as well. It's recognized as the 2009 Montana Tourism Event of the Year. River City Rich Festival draws more than 15,000 individuals in the heart of Missoula for the ver a variety of fun activities and ex uh, exceptional music. This two-day fe free festival features first-class art and entertainment for both residents and visitors. They have a bunch of food trucks, vendors. They also have uh, um, beer gardens. So basically the whole kind of downtown area uh, we'll have special cups where you can drink uh, beer outside and enjoy the music. So a lot of fun stuff like that. There's definitely a lot of different things happening here as well. Kicking things off is kids rock bands. So if you have a kid, you want to do some stuff starting at uh, 1230 uh, downtown. This is basically Ryman and uh, um, Main Street. 
kids rock bands are going to be performing at 12:30. Uh, Ashley Finn and the uh, Riveters will be playing at 2:30. Uh, Lainey Liu and the Bird Dogs will be playing at 4:30. Amy Helm is going to be at 6:30, and Amanda Shaw will wrap up your Fridays. Um, and most of the concerts they don't go past 10, 10:30, 10 um, and they, they don't stay up too late. And so there's a great opportunity for that. And then Saturday, we got Cowboy and the, and the Salamanders, which is a local band, and also uh, some of the people who work for the uh, KFGM uh, radio station that also lives here in MCAT. Uh, 2.30 on Saturday is Off in the Woods. Uh, 4.30, Drew Landry and the Northside Country Ramblers is a 4.30 on uh, Saturday. And then Saturday, 6.30 is Hillbenders. Keller Williams' Grateful Grass is going to be uh, wrapping up performances Saturday night. Then, there, of course, there's the Family Roots, uh, 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 the Family Roots Festival stage, which is usually located at Karis Park. And this is a 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday only. So, Manatee Nord Tangled Tones will be playing uh, from 10 to 10:30 with the kids and their little guitars. Um, Double a bubble dance party is from 10:30 to 11. A living rhythm a drum circle is going to be 11 to 12. Double bubble dance party. So a lot of bubble dance parties are happening. So from 12 to 1, they're having that. And then child bloom guitars. There's going to be a bunch of kids playing their guitars from 1 to 2, and you can enjoy stuff like that. There's a lot of activity providers, animal wonders, bathing beauties, beach transportation, and Casa of Missoula. Different. Oh man, so many organizations. Missoula gymnastics. You're probably going to see a bunch of people doing parkour up and around the street. Um, just a lot of uh, fun activities happening. You can find out more information going on to RiverCityRootsFestival.com. It's always a fun activity. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and there's just a lot of fun. And you can see the countdown, just a lot of people just enjoying some good times, good, good music. All right, so for those of you interested in doing some of the more typical stuff, you know, you have the fourth annual Bike to the Barns Tour. So if you're uh, uh, sponsored by Orchard Homes, Target Range, and many of those areas in the um, more uh, western part of Missoula, just west of Reserve. You get to bike around, get some stamps, collect some things. It is a challenge that goes well until the first weekend in October. So enjoy that. Do some biking. Look at some of those uh, um, farm stands and stuff like that. And get involved with your farming community in Missoula. So stroller strides at Tool Park for mothers out there looking to get in shape and also have your kid watch outside at Tool Park. They're doing some fitness there most days of the week and also uh, Friday is uh, still happening as well. So uh, if you're interested also, Missoula Food Bank does a breakfast and a lunch activities for uh, kids at their Empower Place. It's a hands-on science learning thing with Spectrum, Missoula Public Library, and also the Missoula Food Bank team up to create a, an atmosphere for kids of learning and nutrition. So it's, uh, and also this kind of, it's gonna start wrapping up the uh, free kids lunch. Uh, kids eat free during the summer. This is usually for kids 18 and younger to get free lunches either from the library, from uh, Missoula Food Bank, and this is usually from 11.30 to about one. And then as we transition into the uh, school year, Food Bank will be initiating more of their after-school um, free lunch programs for a lot of the kids, or free snacks. Um, Camp Horror is going to be uh, featured at the Roxy, so this is in part with uh, uh, the Roxy Theater uh, celebrating uh, horror camps. You know, as we transition out of the summer, summer camps are over, but now we get to watch some of these movies and stuff that warn you never to go to a summer camp because horror movies happen there. Tiny Tales and Storytime is the Musical Public Library, 1030 as always. Good, a good chance to get kids involved with books. Uh, sidewalk sale at Radius Gallery. Hey, if you're interested in going to a sale, look at some arts. They're doing a sale at the Radius Gallery, which is going to be off of Higgins Avenue, right next to the Mercantile Marriott. Um, let's see here. <laughs> if you're interested in doing some stitching, create your own clothes and stuff like that, they have open hours at, um, here at the public library called Yarns and they feature it over at the Black Fort Border Room on the fourth floor. So it's a great drop in that kind of stuff. And they're going to continue doing those River City Dash services this weekend. So a lot of college students just kind of starting to come into Missoula would be a good opportunity for them to take advantage of this free shuttle service to go up the Clark Fork River and just drop you off with your inner tube or floating and you can float all the way down to uh, uh, the downtown Missoula area or wherever you parked and you get a ride. So uh, you go to the university, go on the U dash. It goes well until Thursday through Sunday from 12 to about 6 p.m., which is their last shuttle. Uh, let's see. Lolo's Farmer's Market today at 2. Check that out, Farmer's Market. Uh, Lego Club, Missoula Public Library at 2 p.m. as well. 
Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. We got uh, at Highlander Beer, we're going to have Louis Bond who's going to be playing some music, acoustic music. You got Ed Johnson who will be playing um, some acoustic music at Ten Spoon Winery tonight. Uh, Kirtan is going to be at Sacred Alley Acoustic Music More. Uh, the Polish Ambassador is going to be playing at the Walmart. It's electronic club music. So let's see here. KFGM Missoula Community Radio Summer so Showcase is going to be at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center tonight at 7 p.m. Karaoke Jack is going to be at uh, the Jack Salon. Mama Concert VRTX Fitness is going to be acoustic uh, concert there. Dueling Pianos at Staven Hoop tonight at 8 p.m. Um, you got the old post is doing some live music with Larry Hirschberg. Um, and then Jackson Holter will be at Union Club. And Camp Horror will be doing their festival uh, a picture show with the Rockery Horror Picture Show. First showing at 9.30 and the last showing at 11.45 p.m. So a late night showing of that is going to be part of that. Hey, if you're interested in doing some Saturday stuff, the Roots Festival is continuing on there, and I went over it with you guys. But also, it's a good way to double dip and do the Clark Fork River Market. Enjoy some fun um, produce grown here by Missoulians for sale to enjoy. And get on those huckleberries, because I have, uh, most of the huckleberries have been sold out, and I've been angry because I haven't had a huckleberry all year. Um, yeah, so you guys can enjoy that. It happens at various locations downtown from about 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. roughly. I usually go between like 10 and 12 just for like, like the guaranteed at times. Um, let's see. Garden City Harvest is doing a uh, native pollinators uh, environmental class about native bees. And this is at Garden City Harvest starting Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, story time is with Public Library, 1030 again on Saturdays. They do this quite a bit often, so you can't miss it. Uh, sidewalk signing with Pat Kittleson is going to be at Fact and Fiction Bookstore. It's going to be a book signing. If so, if you know who Pat Kittleson is, you can enjoy a book sign of that. Moving on, uh, the continuation of the sidewalk sale starts at 11 a.m. at Radius Gallery, so you can enjoy some sweet art and more. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see what else is here. Oh, cool. So, Base Camp, um, um, our very own John Howard from Homegrown Comedy, has been editing here at MCAT for the premiere of their Base Camp Horror Shorts. So, they're going to be showing a series of shorts and part of Camp Horror Film Festival starting at 2 p.m. on Saturday. You guys should check it out. It's going to be great. Um, there's also going to be a podcast at the Roxy called Camp Horror Live. Tommy Knockin Podcast. Enjoy that. Um, Camp Horror Film is Slaughter Beach is going to be featured tonight. So there's a lot of things happening this weekend. Josh Farmer is going to be at Ten Spoon Winery. He's going to be playing his music. Love Josh Farmer. He's one of my favorite uh, um, soloist artists. Uh, just great artist. John Floridus is another one. It was voted best uh, indie um, um, performer by the Independent when the, we had one, uh, but he's going to be playing at the DraftWorks tonight. Um, most of these, kind of like uh, earlier at Taverns, are going to be 6 p.m., and then now we're going into more 8 p.m. shows with Dr. Doug Olson is going to be playing some jazz at the Old Post. Um, we're going to have uh, Maligna. Uh, wait, no, that's not. Westside Theater is going to be an Argentine tango intro class in social dance. So if you want to go dancing, go to Westside Theater tonight. Um, outdoor cinema, like I said, MCAT will be doing the outdoor cinema for uh, Castaway on the Head Start School on the north side. Support the north side neighborhood to continue uh, these outdoor movies. Get a blanket, get a lawn chair, enjoy a movie, Castaway. Uh, solid uh, karaoke is going to be at Westside Lanes, Band in Motion, Gibbet Union Club, TJ, uh, DJ, uh, Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander every Saturday. And yeah, that's pretty much it for your uh, events and more. Uh, I thought I was going to go under, but when I keep on vamping about, uh, oh, I'm gone. See ya.